Now what you see before you is the Viper 750 standalone logic board. And one of the greatest features that this little baby has is actually a built-in timer which gives you an option by this little jumper switch here that I just removed to place it either on 60 seconds, 45 seconds, or 25, which I'm choosing for this example, as follows. Now we have several other things including relays here and some terminals to join this timer with the Viper standalone's other features. Now I'm choosing to use a uh, fully insulated 16 multi-stranded four wire cable in this instance. Now notice I'm giving myself uh, about a quarter inch or so enough so that I can uh, uh, put into the terminal and I can make sure that it's only the metal making contact because I don't want the rubber to get accidentally pinched and I get a false contact. Now I'm going to put these two blue wires which I'm choosing to be my contact wires straight in the terminal as you see and it's actually really simple to connect and voila. Now I'm using a small enough screwdriver that fits these terminals without stripping the outside. I'm choosing the black and white for my 110 in, I'm sorry, my 110 out because that wire is going to go connected to the 110 in on the device that I will be connecting the Viper standalone system to. Now if you see I have some uh, of the wire exposed here between the terminals. You don't want too much of that exposed. So what I'm simply going to do is take the only other tool necessary here which is a splicer and just cut off some of that so that we have enough to go in but not too much exposed because we don't need a short. And it goes back in and we're ready to go. Let me move the logic board to the side some. Over here you see the AC uh, Viper control board or motherboard which goes to the AC uh, units for the Viper uh, gate systems. Now I'm choosing to take these two blue wires and using them on terminals 1 and 2 which would be my open close contact and as they run through the insulation and end up coming out here I've connected them to terminals 13 and 14 if you're counting from left to right which are the open close contact and the ground contact for the Viper standalone system. Now the two that are over here on the 110 volts out will be going on the 110 volts in over here because that's what the standalone is actually doing giving me 110 from solar power converting it and providing it for this board. And so this is the simple installation for the compatibility between whatever motor you have that is an AC unit on this side and the Viper standalone system uh, logic board which would be inside the standalone. Now let's go look at the full setup. Now what you're looking at here is actually several things. You're looking at the Viper TC9 on the left hand side fully exposed with electronics. Some wires that were previously connected to the Viper standalone system on the right which is uh, uh, being charged by the solar panel which is on top on the upper right hand side corner. Now that's actually a 10 watt depending on which area you find yourself located whether there's full sunlight exposure or uh, less you would use a bigger or smaller wattage uh, solar panel. Um, now if we look at the inside of the Viper standalone system you're gonna find several different things that make it a standalone system. On the top in blue we have a uh, inverter uh, which pushes out 750 watts that's why it's called the Viper 750 standalone. What you see here are two 35 amp 12 volt Viper gate system uh, deep cycle gel batteries. Okay, now both of them together we have them in cross connection or series what is called and that would provide us double the amperage making it still 12 volts but 35, uh, 35 times 2 which would be 70 amps. Now if you connect them in parallel you will keep the amperage so you definitely want to have them connected in series which this system already comes as so. Now the only thing that I'm going to do here is take the fuse that is provided with my system and connect it with a little fuse holder as so 
And if you notice, inside the uh, logic board, which we showed you before, there's a little power light on the right-hand side, which is over here, that just turned on. That's letting me know that my system is now fully operational. If you take a close-up of the wiring, I have several different wires connected here. I have the one from the solar panel, which goes into the logic board on terminals 4 and 5, which say DC in. It's the same place where the connections for the batteries are connected. Then I have on terminal 1 and 2, my open-close contact, which I spoke about before, which actually runs through this wire and connects to terminals 13 and 14, which my connections for my receiver, the yellow and blue were on 13, and the blue was on 14, were actually connected. What you have to do now is actually remove these, because this receiver is no longer running the TC9. Now the receiver inside the standalone is. So you take those two open-close contact wires and connect them to terminals 13, and 14. Now these two that I have over here on AC going in were the ones I spoke about in the other board which if we follow actually run to AC going out over here. Now let me give you a little more of the inside of the Viper standalone system. This is the logic board that I described earlier. Now over here you see the connections for the receiver which you'll notice as you read your board and it tells you what colors to put where. The red for the positive, the green for the negative, and the two blues for contact. This is a state-of-the-art 300 megahertz Viper receiver with an 8-dip switch channel that makes it compatible with your Viper remote control uh, transmitter keychain. Now over here we have the actual on uh, wires for the inverter connected to terminals 5 and 6 on the logic board which say inverter on off. So that already comes previously connected. The only connection that you're making is these two wires from the AC in and out and the contact to the motor. Now over here there's a special plug provided which comes out of the inverter taking 110 volts and running it into your logic board which previously comes connected as well. Everything you see here comes connected again except for these three wires. The solar panel, the contact to the motor, and the AC going out. Now, the actual timer turning off does several things. It turns the inverter off to prevent it from overheating as well as from draining the batteries. So you maintain the charge on your batteries. Not to mention that it's continuously receiving charge by the solar panel which you can actually put in whatever position the sun happens to be in as you can see. By the way, this was my setup. The solar panels do not come with installation gear. I simply chose a half inch uh, conduit for electrical to run my electrical wire through. And if you look at the back, I use some simple little wire clamps, C clamps, to connect it to the board itself. Now the screws are not long because I don't want them to hit the uh, glass itself. And uh, for this connection as well, I used a uh, two-wire, multi-stranded, 16-gauge uh, cable as well.